Find functional hilarity at the Biffa Emporium. Girl, it's what I heard. Allegedly. It's just the word. Allegedly. It's on the street. Allegedly. I sing to the beat. Allegedly. Lee, lee, lee. Allegedly. Lee, lee, lee. Allegedly. Lee, lee, lee. Allegedly. Well, let's get to Gabri San Gabrissi and Rob's Money That's Fishy. Oh, they had their live show yesterday. I wonder how that went. I went on the Instagrams, but neither one of them had photos from the events. Oh, Lord. Gabrissi's reasonably shady moment is involving Jamal Bryant. You asking him to get out of your phone and get into your life. So when Giselle was out to Mother's Day dinner with her family and Jamal, somebody asked her for a picture, and she said no, which is fine. She was also in the middle of the booth waiting to eat. I can get it. I can also get it because you're with your family. It's a special time. You want the people you're with to know, hey, y'all are important. I want to be mom today. I so Giselle wants to know, was she shady or was the lady shady? I feel like the lady asked a question and you answered it. Sometimes you might not like the answer. Also, she should have thought, hmm, maybe I should wait till she's finished eating. Maybe I could catch her outside the bathroom or maybe on the way to the car. Yeah, Rob said most people will wait till we're done eating and try to get us on the way out. That's fine. So Gabrissi apologizes to the lady. She said, you know, I ended up thinking about it for the whole darn dinner. Oh, God. So now Rob's moment, she's looking for a six top on Mother's Day for her and the fam and Gabrice gonna say, oh honey, you have to use your celebrity. You have to call them and say, I'm Rob Dixon. Um, They would ask, so who is that? I mean, a few people who watch Bravo might know you, but girl, you ain't nobody's NeNe leaks. A few weeks ago, they just told you, but you needed an appointment at the Gucci store. You'd think they'd be trained to spot a schlepperter. Oh, Lord, but Rob Dixon made the reservations on the wrong day. How you forget Mother's Day is Sunday when you've been a mother for a minute. So Rob got to take her mom out on a do-over date. And her pappy said, yeah, you always give us a rain check that we can never cash. This is why Juan Dixon always looks at you so dutifully. Instead of romantically. But now Gabrissi lets everybody know she ain't dating Peter Thomas. I feel like Peter would be great for you. But then again, you live check to check and he lives deep in debt, so that ain't gonna work. Giselle said the Jasmine brand asked her, are you dating Peter? And she said no. And they said, okay, we'll say an unknown but reliable source said that. And she said, no, say it was me. So they still trying to keep it going while acting like they ain't keeping it going. Okay, Jazz. She put a little Jasmine's business in the street. And you know how we love street business. Girl, are they bringing up that dry-ass Met Gala? Old news from old broads. So now we're getting into Gabrice's random thoughts. From a Hampton hoe. And she said, if you on a girl's trip and somebody makes the host or the birthday girl mad, you can put them out, right? I guess. So Giselle never really fills us in on what happens, but she says she's going to stay in hotels and not do a girl's trip in a house next time. Was Giselle the one put out? I could see it. Oh, I bet this is the Miami trip that they filmed. And I bet they put um, Wendy out. I could see it. Gabrissi now moves on to saying she don't know how people don't know how to apologize. You barely apologize. It takes a season to get an apology out of you. You still got Karen Huger waking up in a cold sweat. What world are these heifers living in talking about Giselle is quick to apologize and doesn't drag things out for three weeks? That was literally your plot line for the past two seasons. Lord, so we wrapping the show up with the do's and don'ts of how to apologize. I think this is slick shade to either Wendy or Candace. I, we we going to find out when who, whenever this episode airs. 
So we going through all the shitty ways to apologize. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry, but you're being sensitive. I'm sorry, but it was a joke. I've had to say I'm sorry, but it was a joke because I'm like, I, you really thought I was being serious? That was clearly a joke. I don't joke with my friends. I learned that. I'm like, I, I'll say something and y'all will take that to heart. That's why I shade you heifers. Don't nobody get mad. You really gonna use Karen Huger as an example and say she doesn't understand your humor? When you walked around in a free ray shirt? This episode should be called the lack of self-awareness special. Rob sounds like such a dude. Giselle said, well, you know, Rob, sensitive people make you mad. She said, they don't make me mad. I just, I'm not a sensitive person, so I don't know what to say and what not to say. It just gives me 1950s father tea. Oh! Giselle came with the shade. Well, you know, these are people that cry every five minutes and fold up napkins. Okay, so I, I maybe Candace was put out. Now, this is some cute, sneaky pressing for Momo for the season. I'm here for it. So now they get into how to keep it real with your overly sensitive friends. Giselle said, just give up the friendship. I think it's really a test of your emotional intelligence and also some things you don't have to bring up with everybody. I mean, even the way Rob says, sensitive, and then Gabrissi gonna say, compassion is overrated. This is why your daughters call you an energy vampire. This is why they always look tired when they look at you. So then we go into what an apology is and Rob says it can involve changed behavior. Like if I'm apologizing for being late, that means I'm not going to be late. And Gabrissi said, but you get joy out of being late. I think she's just waiting to see if anybody's actually going to miss her butt. I don't know how you late when nobody cared when you showed up. Okay, well, that was a cute little 40 minutes to nothing. Well, I'm going to see you soon for something more interesting than that. Let's head over to see what Carlos's thick tongue is, is talking about in Atlanta. It is 5.57 a.m. here on the West Coast. And you really gonna tell me you've got Meghan McCain on for what? We didn't like her on The View. Why you think we wanna see her with you? I thought this was a show for black women. Of all the honkies you could have gotten, there are good honkies out there. Give us a Meryl Streep or a Reese Witherspoon. Reese works with OWN. Reese knows Oak. Give us some honkies we fuck with. Carlos said this is his friend. Well, you know what? You don't have any style and clothes, so I'm not surprised it moved over to people. You met her at a Lady Gaga concert. See, your priorities is fucked up. If I go to a Lady Gaga concert, that's the last person I'm talking to is a Meghan McCain. Oh, Carlos got a man. Then your partner should have talked you out of talking to her. Oh my goodness, he said he got starstruck by Meghan McCain? That's somebody you bump into, not that you're struck by. Oh God, Meghan said, people who want to like me think I'm misunderstood. People who want to hate me, stop, Heffa. Nobody wants to hate you. That, that's the first thing. White people think we want to hate them. No, y'all force it upon us. We ain't trying to hate nobody. We ain't got that kind of energy. If we did, we would have gotten even eons ago. <laughs> Carlos said, look, we don't talk about politics. We just talk about housewives. I can't be friends with somebody that doesn't respect my rights, though. How are you looking at the heart and the soul when she's promoting a party that's robbing you, your family, and your audience of their voting rights? Oh, God, you said she's like a Wendy Williams and the other shock jocks. Well, she's not a disc jockey. She's not on the radio. She's a talking head on The View. Why are you giving her so much credit? Oh, Lord. Carlos is a fan of Elizabeth Hasselbeck, too. I like watching Liz get run over by Whoopi. I did enjoy that. But there's just something about Meghan McCain that's too brutish for me to enjoy. Carlos says his friends think, I may not agree with what she says, but she stands up for what she believes in. I'm sorry, but if you standing up for bullshit, I can't be with you. I can't disagree on human rights. That's not something we can debate on. Megan says, well, you know, I've moved on from The View, but everybody asked me about it because it was such an iconic show. You've moved on to what? Not selling books? Megan says, son is the only cast member she still has a relationship with. Whoopi and Joy don't need your ass. 
Oh, God. So Carlos asked, was the most saddest thing, the most saddest thing, okay, girl, but was the most saddest thing you losing your friendship with Whoopi? And she said COVID made it easier for people to hate her through the screen, i.e. her co-host. No, you're, you're easy to hate because you stand for bullshit. You stand for tyranny. You stand for voter suppression. You stand for repeal of civil rights. You stand for repeal of reproductive rights. You stand for the wrong thing. You need to sit your pink ass down. So he asked Megan if she want to get back on TV. And God, she can never just say yes or no. It's always him and hawing. She says she wants to be off camera. She's like, I've been offered things, but nothing seems right. Nothing seems perfect. Okay, so you ain't getting no jobs. Like, you ain't getting no book sales. Nobody's interested in you. Oh, God, this is exhaust listening to Megan pander like this. So we talking about how she educated herself during the Black Lives Matter movement. So basically for 35 years, you was just an irritating honky, but now you've seen the light. You trying to get somebody to buy this book, girl. She's going in on Hilaria Baldwin pretending to be a Latina woman. Honey, we black. We don't know who Hilaria Baldwin is. I mean, I know, I just don't care. Y'all keeping up with that heifer? I honestly feel sorry for her. Alec Baldwin used to be hot, but you got him in his rundown years. At least the money's good. I can't wait to see the comments on this one. Oh, God, now here we go talking about the book. So apparently, Megan had an audio book deal, so that's why nobody bought the book, because she, Audible just paid her to put it out. Well, that was smart, because wasn't nobody buying it. People will listen to anything for free. Okay, now, Megan. You literally just said, you know, during the Black Lives Matter movement, we need to learn how to listen. When someone is screaming, we've got to listen to them. The fact that everybody is tearing your ass up about these 200 copies, maybe you should listen to us. Maybe you should realize why we ain't fucking with you and why we laugh at you falling down the stairs of life. Oh my God, Carlos, this is really boring. I, is this heifer trying to run for office? This is like when Mary J. Blige and Hillary Clinton was together. It's just as awkward. Like, why aren't you talking about housewives? At least have the heifer talk about housewives. Since she's so accomplished and so good on The View, have a conversation about housewives. This heifer ain't made me crack one fucking smile. I miss Rosie on The View. That's who I miss. I don't miss Meg. This episode had the potential to be good and surprising, but now I just see why Meg ain't on The View no more. She dry. And Carlos, you seem dry this episode. You've actually been giving a little bit. You letting her talk too much and she ain't saying nothing. The questions you ask and we don't care about. Why are you trying to sell us this honky hussy? Finally, 30 minutes in, he asked her about the Beverly Hills premiere. But the first 30 minutes were, buy my book. I like black people. Buy my book. I like black people. Ooh. Ooh, this is a punishment. I'm going to take a break and make a sandwich. Carlos says the biggest mistake Atlanta made was letting Portia go. And I have to agree. They should have kicked Kenya off because what is she really bringing? Mark ain't there no more. We're tired of you whining about the divorce when we never saw the marriage. And again, y'all never even cohabitated. I remember you went down to Goodwill and got them suits. I remember. Okay, so Megan McCain says she's actually friends with Erica and she knew some shit was going down before it came out in the press. But Erica said she didn't know and she finds out along with everyone else. So your friends be telling your business. But we get back to why isn't Jen being given the same scrutiny as Erica? I think we're also just waiting for Jen to go to jail. I think Erica's getting the scrutiny because we know they're going to get away with it. Her man ran away to the facility and claimed coot, and Erica's saying, oh, I didn't, I didn't, so nobody's going to go to jail, nobody's going to get paid. Jen's going to jail, we're going to see her pay. The sad thing is with Jen, her mom is wasting her retirement trying to get Jen free. When Jen needs to just take the deal, especially since Sissy Stu started snitching. So now he asks her, what's the top five you co-host of all time? Whoopi, Joy, 
Rosie. I think that's enough. Oh, God. Ooh. Carlos King. You never miss a minute to be shady. You really gonna say Star Jones Reynolds. Star Jones Reynolds. You snuck that Reynolds in there. However, Megan wouldn't put Joy in her top five. Girl, I had to make breakfast during this episode. I mean, this has been a real snore. I'm gonna have to take a nap. Thank goodness I don't film Pop Rose till one. All right, well, that was the shit, and I mean shit. Ooh, that was awful, Carlos. Awful. Give us an interesting hockey. What about Black Dolores? I'd rather have listened to Teresa Giudice struggle and spit than this shit. Alleged what? Alleged who? Allegedly, Lee, Lee. Allegedly. Don't blame. Don't sue. Allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly.